looked at uh, we looked at the destabilization phase. Let's now look at the continuum phase, which obviously is uh, related to the waves that we talked about. Uh, I think back in chapter six or eight, where we had put some uh, uh, heating uh, on the equator scale. A few days. We already said that MJO uh, waves do not move uh, this fast, uh, and we have talked about talked about uh, processes like convective dissipation, ocean atmospheric coupling, and the uh, change in the vertical stability because of the convection being uh, part of the system. Um, the main thing about the convective phase is that there is an inbuilt uh, self. Uh, induction, or I don't know, whatever you want to call it, that it has seeds to propagate to the uh, to the east by having this kind of uh, convective phase that we talked about with the circulation uh, which has uh, uh, convergence in the upper level and divergence in the lower level uh, in front of it, which is going to create uh, radiative cooling, adiabatic compression, balance giving us low wind speed because divergence means low wind speeds which is going to give us uh, um, SSD warming and a high pressure of course because of the subsidence and so on. And we can see the waves here propagating ahead of the convection but you can also see the low level convergence, upper level divergence and so on. So these are the processes that are important and typically these are the cartoons you get especially from Bin Wang and Chidong Zhang and so on where now you have convection, uh, there is all kinds of uh, asymmetries of the uh, circulation ahead of it and circulation behind it which is related to uh, the basic state as well as uh, the Kelvin waves and there are different ideas expressed here shown as uh, the boundary layer and the convection above it but you have boundary layer uh, moisture convergence with the uh, Kelvin wave signature here converging into the uh, heating and then you have the Rossby wave structure on the other side. On the upper side you have the lows here and of course you have the highs in the upper level and you have divergence corresponding to the convergence. So these are the, uh, uh, the patterns of uh, circulation associated with the MJO that are going to be part of the convective phase. The main thing there is um, once the instability happens during the destabilization and the buildup, then convection happens and then convection itself is setting up the um, restoration phase, if you will, uh, ahead of it in terms of uh, warming the SSDs before uh, convection arrives on top. So this we looked at already, so sensible heat is low, uh, latent heat uh, increases and then convection happens and then there is uh, in, uh, great uh, reduction in uh, latent heat loss because of the uh, post uh, convective phase uh, and the sub subsidence and so on. There is the net long wave which the, uh, has some variability and the net surface radiation and the downward short wave which is related to the cloudiness uh, etc. So restoration phase is also seen in these figures that we saw before. So here is the build up, uh, the warm phase, convection and the cooling and then the restoration that happens afterwards. So you can see that it's not always exactly uh, the same level, depends on various other factors. Uh, and we also saw in terms of the lower level, upper level communications that we had talked about before in terms of the 10 to the 6 meter scale uh, and the baroclinic processes etc. But we talked about how wind speeds uh, low at the surface, high at the upper atmosphere, 200 hectopascal, but uh, the same during the uh, convection and so on and so forth. Okay, So the restoration phase and there are several such diagrams including the one from the Harry Hendon chapter that I talked about. Don't 
uh, worry too much about the specific numbers, but get the sense of the order. So we talked about the diurnal cycle here being a uh, degree or two sometimes, but when you look at the mean composites, this is showing the schematic of zonal cross-section uh, of MJO convection, circulation anomalies uh, in these black dash arrows, uh, imposed upon warm pool mean low-level winds, so you have the uh, circulation so you have in the uh, perturbed side at we, as we called before you have uh, westerly winds and wishy the wind induced uh, surface heat flux happening so you have cooling uh, what we call disturbed or perturbed so there is a net cooling so latent heat loss and uh, solar radiation is reduced whereas ahead of it you have reduced latent heat increased solar radiation so there is uh, warming of plus 3, uh, plus 0.3 Kelvin. So there is a calm phase and net heating. So this is the kind of uh, circulation and you can see also the asymmetry in the scales of the backside of the MJO convection. We've talked about these anvils and the processes associated with them and the 10,000 uh, kilometers uh, scale on this side. And we have seen that within this uh, large scale uh, MGO uh, envelope we had three to four thousand uh, meter uh, kilometer uh, westward propagating uh, features uh, embedded within this mesoscale cloud clusters and so on okay um, again each event can be different but the um, processes are kind of uh, common. Looking at the uh, processes of uh, generation region in the Indian Ocean, we talked about the West Indian Ocean where we already mentioned that the winds are weak which are favorable for building up warm SST. In general, the Indian Ocean is very warm so you have weak westerlies which have a convergence and uh, deeper thermocline here so this is uh, not so obvious but unlike the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans the Indian Ocean has either fairly flat thermocline or depending on the se season the upwelling is more on the uh, western side instead of the eastern side so you can see that this is the Indo-Pacific warm pool and if you look at the SST variance at interannual time scales um, it's fairly low seasonal variability is the highest but in the uh, western region where you have MJO genesis and in here where the MJO related Kelvin waves come in and interact with the flow here you have slightly higher uh, variance okay so that's something to remember that there is always uh, high SST that's favorable for uh, MGO genesis and perturbation to generate uh, instabilities and fire off convection. But many studies have shown that, uh, like Ray and Chidong Zhang's paper and so on, that uh, there are extratropical perturbations that are often involved uh, in uh, firing these convections and they seem to be related to these primary and secondary MJOs that I mentioned where the circumnavigating MJOs coming back and firing up again are called secondary MJOs so they depend on the phase of the previous MJO whereas the primary MJOs are related to these external uh, extratropical perturbations but it's not clear uh, what determines uh, what is uh, what becomes a primary uh, MJO and what becomes uh, a secondary MJO and so on. So let me do the wave uh, feedbacks in the next podcast. Uh, we are keeping this fairly short because uh, I will show a table which shows that there are many theories. These processes are always uh, observed in uh, observations uh, in the data that's available but in the model the MJOs are not perfect so it's always a challenge to try to understand the observational processes in models but the surface heat exchange, moisture uh, convergence and loading, uh, instability buildup, convection and these wave uh, feedbacks are always there and yet uh, somehow the models are not always um, able to capture all these processes as observed uh, in the data. Okay.